I found the best way to protect yourself from the current market chaos. The thing is, we have no idea how long current conflicts or uncertainty will last, so I needed to dig deep into what the experts and history have to say. Meet Ray Dalio, the visionary behind the world's largest hedge fund. Not only is this guy rich, he's actually pretty smart, building many of the financial instruments and metrics that we still use to this day. Ray Dalio has a pretty unusual way of looking at the markets, and journalists took notice. See, for most of his life, the methods that guided his success remained secret. We've all been trying to make sense this morning, as we do every morning, of where we are in this economy and where we are in the markets, and I haven't had an opportunity to, to hear from you and ask. Help us understand what, what's going on inside Ray Dalio's mind right now. He said that getting a lot of attention for being successful is a bad position to be in, calling it tall poppy syndrome, because the tallest poppies in the field are the most likely to have their heads whacked off. But as is the case with secrets, the more he tried to keep it hidden, the more curious the public became. Tension was building. And then the sensationalist media frenzy exploded, accusing Dalio of leading this sort of cult. Dalio needed to set the record straight, so he compiled some of his core principles, particularly the ones that were under media attack, into this sort of esoteric philosophy book called Principles. And then he made it free to read on his website and YouTube. I took the time to go through both of his books. The reason I thought it was important to actually go through his books instead of just watching a summary on YouTube was I strongly feel Dalio has some of the best insights in the world on investing during times of extreme uncertainty. The greatest rewards tend to come to the people willing to go the extra mile. And there's one sector of the economy Dalio knows well, a sector that's been trending, commodities. Now when to follow in a traditional path, the young Dalio of the 1970s decided to follow a very different trail, the hippie trail. In a search for ultimate truth and enlightenment, he'd studied under a famous yogi. Being this poor hippie backpacker, he didn't have a lot of money to pursue his trading dreams, so he fell into commodities. The reason being they have low margin requirements, meaning Dalio could get a lot of exposure even with a limited amount of money. And this was perfect timing. As the draft for the Vietnam War expanded, gold was beginning to rise. The government assured people that this was only temporary. Your dollar will be worth just as much tomorrow as it is today. But with the war, both in prices in Vietnam, trust was slowly fading away. By the spring of 1971, the dollar reached a breaking point. Over the next decade, the cost of living more than doubled. As the dollar lost more than half its value. Europeans wouldn't accept it from American tourists, and the global financial system was in the process of breaking down. Then on Sunday, August 15th, 1971, President Nixon went on TV and shocked the world. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. Young Dalio was about to learn an important lesson. Don't trust the government when they assure you a currency won't be devalued. On the following Monday, Dalio walked into the floor of the exchange expecting pandemonium. And there was, but not the kind he was expecting. Instead of falling, the stock market jumped, about 4%, a significant daily gain. Dalio spent the rest of the summer studying past currency devaluations, and the cycle was as old as time itself. If only Dalio had done his homework ahead of time. Picture this. Your government goes on a rampant spending spree for years, taking on too much debt and paying for it with a depreciated currency. All is well for a while, but a combination of supply chain issues, war, and inflation are not only causing the price of oil and other commodities to spike to record highs, but markets are beginning to retreat by double digit percentages. Investors are moving to safer assets. Fear is circling that we're in a bubble, or worse, the brink of total collapse. What I just detailed, is 1973. This is why understanding the past can give us enormous insight into the future. Once again, in the early 70s, young Dalio was blindsided. But in retrospect, he saw that the dominoes had fallen in this logical sequence. Dalio thinks that the US dollar today could potentially lose status as the world's reserve currency. And this makes sense given the fact that all empires have risen and fallen. See, the world's reserve currency is constantly in flux. And not only that, Dalio believes we could be on the verge of a new world order. 
suggesting a different kind of investing strategy. From here, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, iTrust Capital. iTrust allows you to place your crypto in a Roth retirement account. What this means is you can buy, sell, and trade crypto and pay zero capital gains on your wins. This is amazing for traders. With a Roth, you pay your tax upfront when putting money into the account. And at retirement, you pay no tax once you start pulling out at age 59 and a half years old. This is probably the most simple way to save on all capital gains. iTrust will be linked in the description of this video. If you use that link to open an account, you'll receive $100 in free Bitcoin just for joining. Now, if you've tried to buy anything recently, you've probably noticed a trend. Could this be a complete repeat of the 1970s? or a real super cycle. Super cycles are long periods where commodities trade at well above their price trend. Going back 100 years, we've seen at least three super cycles, and they all have a common trait, ties to massive economic change. The last super cycle lasted from the mid 90s through the Great Recession. China's rapid economic growth saw surging demand for all commodities as the country expanded its cities, pumping money into roads and railways. The boom lasted until 2011. Oil peaked at well over $100 a barrel. Copper, more than $4 per pound. In the global economy of 2022, everything is connected. The recent rise in wheat futures is expected to hurt the entire world economy and make costs higher for everyone. Wheat prices surged nearly 40% this month hitting their highest level in 14 years on Thursday, a result of the escalating conflict between major exporters, Russia and Ukraine. This is a domino effect on all other commodities and prices. Let's say corn and soybeans go up in price. This means the cost of feeding chickens rises. So the cost to buy chicken at the grocery store also rises. Some consumers will turn to beef instead, but that then pushes up the price of beef as demand increases for that product. And the ripple continues on. An increase in food prices means an increased cost of living. People need to pay for this food. Eventually, wages have to rise. Increased wages makes everything else more expensive. A concern today is wheat. Russia and Ukraine produce nearly 25% of the world's supply. This may be the beginning of a crazy game of commodity dominoes. So what's the play here? Should we all be shorting beer stocks? Maybe, I'll leave that one up to the comment section. But Dalio plays the markets like a game of chess. He sees the world as interconnected pieces of machinery. He tries to find the connection between different assets or factors that the market hasn't quite considered yet. Here's how you can put his thought process in action. So take a look at a current event, take the Russia-Ukraine conflict, research what impacts this has on the global economy, ideally things that aren't getting a ton of press coverage. For example, Ukraine and Russia are the world's biggest exporters of sunflower seeds. So you find this fact out, and then you think through the ways that you could play it on multiple layers. On the surface, that could be, I don't know, shorting sunflower-related stocks. Or maybe you go deeper and look at the industries that use sunflower oil, searching for the cog that is most likely to see the greatest impact. One thing that Dalio loves to do is to find a historical parallel. So take a look at this. The Yom Kippur War. This was a conflict between Israel and Arab states. The primary effect on markets was an oil embargo. This made it very difficult for the Federal Reserve to get a handle on inflation. It even resulted in widespread energy rationing in the United States. In my previous video, I said that geopolitical risks are usually temporary and make for great dip buying opportunities. Take for example, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Surely nuclear annihilation was one of the most significant risks that humanity ever faced, but the market had very little reaction to it and it was resolved pretty quickly. However, the Yom Kippur War's worldwide effect on commodities caused one of the worst markets following a geopolitical event in modern times. So the question remains, how big of an impact will Russia and Ukraine have on global commodities? I'm sure you're already seeing a frustrating change at the gas pump. I mean, I own a moving logistics company with big trucks. We're already spending thousands more on fuel than we were before. At a certain point, that will have to be passed on to customers. Take a couple million businesses feeling the same way as I do, and this is what drives massive economic change. The problem is the future is uncertain. We have no idea how long conflicts will last, but I do know that commodities definitely have a place in a portfolio. If not for the new world order, then at least as a hedge against inflation and Fed money printing. So how do you play it? 
Well, there's a few options. The simplest approach is buying a broad-based commodity index like DBC or DBA. DBC gets you a diversified bundle of crude oil, natural gas, copper, and a whole lot more. DBA has agricultural products like corn, soybeans, and wheat. Now, past performance is no guarantee of future returns, but if you bought either one of them last year, you did pretty darn well. It's important to remember that a bet on a super cycle is a decade-long play. If you're right, you'll make a lot of money, but I wouldn't try to time this. For the risk takers out there, there's always buying call options to get extra leverage, but be very careful and only play options if you know what you're doing. But by far the biggest and most <laughs> degen way to play commodities as a retail investor is with futures. You shouldn't do this, but it's good to understand how it works. Futures let you gain an insane amount of leverage so you can profit a potential massive amount if the price of corn moves like a penny. But that also means you can lose a massive amount. Futures are used by people like farmers to hedge their crops, although most Wall Street degenerates just use them to gamble. And when you trade futures, you have to actually be willing to accept physical delivery of the commodity if you forget to close it. Imagine getting a call from the port that your shipment of thousands of ornamental gourds are ready for pickup because you forgot to close your futures position. That's rare, but it's actually happened. Well, I've no idea how this war will end. Commodities have a proven track record in times of inflation and uncertainty. There could be room for this in a well-diversified portfolio. And if you'd like to see exactly how I'm hedging my portfolio, join my Patreon linked in the description. There you'll find full access to all my investments, live coaching calls every day, research reports, and the friendliest investor community on planet Earth. Just make sure you grab your spot ASAP, links down below. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. I'm Max Maher, and I hope you have a profitable day.